I had a chance to speak with offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick. He discussed his overall views and takes from the scrimmage and gave us a little insight into Zach Wilson assessing Keaton Slovis. Here's that conversation. Aaron, how was the weather and atmosphere inside the indoor practice facility with all of the spring snow outside? It was a lot better than the weather outside, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is wild. This is It feels like January out here. But yeah, it, really, yeah. it, it really does. How do you, how do you, does it affect the team at all when you're, when you're dealing with this? Like when you have to move things in the indoor practice facility, does it affect it? Does it slow the progression that you're looking for? It's not too bad. It's just, we don't like to tackle too much inside there. Um, so we'd rather tackle on grass if we can. So um, we were going to do some tackling, you know, a tackle type of scrimmage today. And we decided to hold off on that till next week. Um, but other than that, we get all, all, all the same work done. You know, it's not a big deal. What was the highlight of your scrimmage today? Um, there were some highlights both ways. I thought um, we did a good job in the red zone today, uh, especially with our first team offense. And um, we're do I'm really pleased so far in camp with just our improvement in goal line, short yardage and red zone. We're, um, doing a good job with that stuff. And, and um, red zone's always been a strength of ours, but I thought we took a step backwards last year in that. And then, you know, the, you know, the goal line short yard stuff is well documented. We didn't do a good enough job last year. And we, I feel like we've done a lot of things to correct that. Um, but our defense got after us in the two minute drill and um, we, we need, we need work at two minute. We haven't done as well as we should in that. So, um, you know, it's, they're doing a good job. Our defense is a lot is uh, bringing a lot of pressure and doing a nice job. Let's dive into some of the specifics of the red zone in the scenarios that you said went well today. What types of things are you looking for and what are you seeing from a game standpoint, from a schematic standpoint that you're liking? Well, we're looking to get a touchdown. We, you know, we, we want to get touchdowns in the red zone. We don't want to kick field goals. Um, and when you get down there, you got to get a touchdown. That's, that's always been our mentality. Um, and, you know, we should get touchdowns. Like today, the drill was, you know, from the fort, we got uh, two series from the 14 yard line and two series from the six yard line. So you should, you should score touchdowns in those situations. Uh, it's, that drill is definitely to our advantage, you know, and then some other drills are more to the defense's advantage. We did one drill today where we're, we're backed up on our own one yard line and got to get it out of there. And, you know, that's, that's a hard drill for the offense. The red zone should be an easy, easier uh, one. And I thought we did a good job today down there. The, the second team offense though, turned it over once and the, the uh, other, the, the first team offense scored both times. Um, so yeah, you just all situational work. We're just trying to, trying to get better. Okay. And now let's uh, talk about the, the concern that you brought up at this point. I mean, it's early, it's, it's March. Uh, what what are you doing to, you know, overcome those concerns and ensure the things up that you want to work on after today's scrimmage? Just keep practicing. We have um, we have a lot of good players out there, um, who guys that are going to be very good players for us that are uh, experiencing things for the first time. You know, so every day there there's a new mistake that's like this. That's the first time this guy has seen that situation. Mm. You know, and, and so you just try to correct it and keep going and. Um, I think you know, we have some young offensive linemen that are really talented. I'm very confident they're going to be good players for us in the fall that are learning. We have some, some new quarterbacks that each day are learning. Um, and uh, we're pretty thin at wide receiver right now. We, you know, we don't, we don't have very many guys that have actually played in games for us that are practicing you know, because Cody Epps is out. And so really just leaves Chase and Keanu are the only two receivers right now that have actually you know, been regular uh, guys in a game for us. And so, um, but no panic at all. We're, 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 we're doing a lot of good things as well. And um, it's practice. What was today? Seven or eight of or spring ball uh, eight. Yeah. I think um, you just got to keep working. You get, you get 15 in the spring, you get 29 in the fall and we'll be ready for our first game. Let's stay with the wide receivers. When do you expect uh, Cody to be back and, and ready to go? Um, he won't be, he won't practice in spring ball. Um, I don't even know exactly. He's close right now. He's, he's actually, well, I should say he's practicing. He's doing a lot of things. He's just not doing anything 
against the defense. Like he's in drills with us. He's running routes. Um, he's, he's in every meeting he's involved. He's wearing the same gear that everybody else is wearing. He's out there with the shoulder flies and helmet. You know, he's, he's practicing. He's just not playing in the, in the 11 on 11 stuff. And, um, he'll be, he'll be full go, uh, in the fall for sure. Well, you mentioned the big, yeah, you mentioned the big three, Chase Roberts, Keanu Hill, Cody Evans. Those are guys that have taken meaningful snaps and made big plays for your team. Who else is going to join them? Who who are you seeing things from right now that makes you feel like you're going to, your wide receiver core is going to be ready to go, not just with those three? Well, the two, the one unfortunate one was uh, Parker Kingston was playing really well and uh, had a, just a hand injury of thumb. I think it's a, I it was just, thumb or wrist, something like that. It's not anything uh, serious long-term, but it's enough that it's keeping him out of practice right now, out of the contact stuff. So he's in the same mode as Cody. He's out there doing everything he can, catching the ball with one hand, but we have to keep him out of the contact drills against the defense. So um, that's going to slow his development a little bit, but he was playing really well, and I'm counting on him being one of our guys in the fall. Uh, he can he can run. And um, – then yeah, there's there's some other guys. Dom Henry starting to show up, and then uh, you know it's no secret we're gonna we're gonna bring in a couple guys in the fall. Mm. Aaron Roderick, the offensive coordinator for BYU, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Now let's move to the offensive line. You talked about the young guys that are experiencing situations for the first time, and and they're learning and. It's frustrating, but but they're learning. And they do join a core of, of some guys that have been around, though, notably yeah. Kingsley Suamate and Connor Pay. So at this point, how does the offensive line for this upcoming season stack up to what you had last season? Well, I, th- I think we're more athletic than we've ever been. Um, and I think we're, you know, we have some depth. You know, and th- the development part of O-line is just, it's working as a unit, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, each one of those guys is talented, um, but it takes reps. It takes time to develop the continuity to work as a unit because there's so much to it. It's, it's the most complicated position in football um, to get those five guys all in sync. And so it just takes reps. That's it. And I'm really confident in in the group we have, um, but each day, you know, they're experiencing new things and Jay's bringing a bunch of different pressures and, and it's really good work for us. We're getting a lot of different fronts and different looks and just learning how to block all those things, how to communicate as a unit uh, takes time. And we've had some really good plays. It's good days. And we've had some days where, you know, you got to learn from it and, and improve the next day, but a lot of confidence in those guys. How would you assess the progression and play of Keaton Slovis over the past two and a half months that you've been working closely with him? Yeah, he looks like he's been here three years. Uh, he's just, a, he's a veteran player. He does veteran things every day. Um, he still makes a mistake or two each day. That's sort of like first time in, in this offense, you know, I, it, sometimes it's related to terminology. Sometimes it's just, you know, small things uh, that he's experiencing for the first time with our system. But um, as far as just like how he plays in the team situations, he's very composed. He's accurate. He's uh, smart about when to check the ball down and when to be aggressive. He's just, he plays like a veteran player and it's just going to take time to develop the chemistry uh, with our receivers and tight ends and with our offensive line you know, protection checks. That, that, that's another thing is the quarterback can help the O-line a lot mm. with making the right calls sometimes and um, or getting us into the right run play, getting us out of a bad play into a good play. The quarterback can do a lot of those things. So there's a, there's a lot there too that helps the offensive line. You mentioned that the defense is certainly bringing the heat and bringing the pressure and challenging what your offense is trying to do. How is the defense different now than they were at this time last year it's just a different scheme i mean it's it's more of a it's a you know they're more more of a four down defense they they but they present a lot of different fronts and they multiple coverages and different pressures um but just i would just say overall right now the biggest difference is just more aggressive more Mm -hmm. 
yeah, more aggressive. Without, I don't think Jay wants to like really be saying everything he's doing publicly, <laughs> but there, there definitely is a lot more pressure than what we've gone against in practice in the past. Sure. I've heard him joke about, uh, you know, hey, don't worry, guys. Like, this is going to be good for looking at the offense saying, I know you're frustrated. This is going to be good for you at some point. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, it's there There should be give and take in practice. I mean, it, it, if one side is always dominating the other side, that's usually not a good thing. Um, you know, there should be days where you leave the practice feeling good, like you won. And there's, there's, it's good for you, too, to leave the field some days going, man, we just got our butt kicked today. And we got things to work on and you want that to go back and forth throughout spring ball and fall camp. And then, you know, that's how you build a good team going into the fall. What does this team do best overall uh, at this point? And you may have already partially answered it with your red zone, uh, you know, alluding to what you did in practice today, but what what's overall the best thing this team does right now? Offensively you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we we're a team that can throw the ball down the field. I, I believe that we, our quarterback can do that. Um, and we've had you know, a couple other quarterbacks that are playing well. And we've got Kate Chase and Keanu and Isaac Rex. And we're getting the ball. You know, we'll, we'll be a team that can throw the ball down the field. I'm, I'm certain of that. And, you know, we just have to keep building our whole system where we have balance you know, and balance doesn't necessarily mean just run and pass. It's balance in everything. It's it's balance in being able to run the ball, uh, throw the ball down the field. Uh, you know, having um, use the whole field basically is is what we're trying to accomplish and use all of our playmakers. And so that's you know we're not there yet, but we're we're working there. From an offensive standpoint, over the remainder of spring ball, what are you emphasizing and working on the most? It just depends on the day we, we have, you know, we take, you get 15 practices and we map, we map out, we're making sure we cover every situation that you can come up with in a game. So we're going to hit the two minute drill a number of times. We'll hit four minute offense a number of times where we have the lead and the defense is trying to get the ball back and we're trying to run the clock out. You know, we were backed up on our own one yard line. You work the red zone then you want to have enough, uh, third down work where you, you know, it's just third down and a variety of di distances, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, you convert the third down and congratulations, it's third down again. And you do it again. And you, you know, we try to um, just work every, every game like situation you can and put the players to the test and see mm -hmm. how they react to those things. It's also a chance to test our schemes. Um, you know, Spring ball is a great time to try some new things, throw some new wrinkles out there. You know, we we don't ever wholesale change to our offense, but if you just stay exactly the same every year, the good teams will catch up to you. So you always want to sort of uh, keep your identity, but maybe um, add a couple of wrinkles here and there that give you an, an advantage. So, the, you know, the, the, that situational work is a great time to try those things. You've been working your voice and probably because the music's blaring inside the indoor practice facility. So <laughs> are you ready yeah. to get, to get back outside, even though it's a little colder? Yeah. I don't have to yell quite as loud outside that the, the, the music is deafening inside. All right. Let's finish with this. Um, if you could pinpoint one play that kind of made you go, Whoa, that was a really good play by said player today in the scrimmage. What What's the best individual play you saw made in the scrimmage? Uh, in today's scrimmage? Yeah. Or today's practice. Um, there wasn't, I can't, I can't really think of one individual play that stood out today, but we did have one in the red zone a few days ago. Um, Keaton Slovitz made a throw to Dom Henry on, it was third and goal from, the 10 or 11 yard line, obvious pass situation. And um, he, th he threaded a throw over the, over the linebackers and dropped it in um, on the back line mm. to Dom Henry. Dom Henry made a nice, nice play on the ball, but it was a, it was an impressive throw. And um, Zach Wilson was at practice actually. And right after practice, he mentioned, he mentioned it to me. He's like, that was a, that it was a nice play. And that's, <laughs> that's one play that's kind of stood out so far. Yeah. I love it. You're very composed, Darren, and I super appreciate that about you. Like you, you never get too high or too low. 
But in those moments, do you get, do you ever get juice like Jack the Mooney and want to like chest bump somebody? I don't. I, <laughs> I, I, I try nothing. to be like this. I try yeah. to be like this all the time. <laughs> Good or bad. You know, when, I, I really, seriously, I, I, I think that's important. Yeah. Um, some coaches are more emotional and up and down and that's great. My personality is more just this. And I, I try to stay consistent for our players that uh, win or lose, they know that I'm going to be the same all the time. And I think that, uh, you know, that, that works for me. And yeah. it's, I'm not saying everybody else has to do it that way, but that's, that's my style. I respect it. You've chosen your lane and you're sticking to it. And I, and I like that. Aaron, uh, we appreciate the lengthy conversation today. Know you're busy. Rest your voice. Get some hot chocolate. Uh, stay warm, and we'll see you next week. Nice talking to you. BYU offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick never shies away from giving us a lot of information to digest.